to begin with, you've heard a lot already about this motto of Cal Poly of learn by doing, and, and I don't want to belabor that because I know that the administration really likes to talk about that, but it's important just to highlight that it really is a guiding philosophy for what we do at the Biological Sciences Department. We're really focused on trying to actually give students practical, hands-on experience that they can use to become more prepared for what they're going to do in the future, for their future careers. We, we really focus on trying to have student-centered experiences, both in the classroom and in, in research. And so I'll talk a little bit about classes. Um, I'll pass it over to some other people to talk about research, and then we'll highlight the three degrees that we have in biology. So, so what do we mean when we say student-centered experiences? It means, that, it means that in our department, we really try to think about what experiences our undergrads are gonna have and what we can do to try to give, give them the best experience possible. And so as an example of that, with our curriculum, we tend to have very small classes um, or relatively small classes. Most of our lectures are 48 or fewer students. We have some classes that are larger than that. Intro bio classes might be at 150 or 200, but, but in general, we focus on keeping our class size small, which allows for more contact between students and professors. Um, we also have laboratories associated with the majority of the classes that we teach. And that's ranging all, at all levels from introductory classes up to upper division classes. Indeed, I think there's only, uh, there's only a handful of classes that we offer that don't have labs associated with them. And, these labs are designed to give students practical experiences and really, again, prepare them for what they're gonna do in the future. Um, the curriculum, the goal of the curriculum then is to actually give students useful skills. Here are some examples of the kinds of classes that we teach and then obviously pictures of, of instructors and students in action. So for those of you that are interested in the pre-health professions, we teach a bunch of anatomy and physiology classes and, and we, in the instruction of those classes, we use models, we use computer simulations and we also have cadavers. Um, Indeed, we now have a summer class in which a select group of students gets to actually prepare the cadavers for the instruction for the upcoming year. And so that's really been an exciting thing that, that we've started doing just in the last couple of years. Um, for people that are interested in, in the molecular sciences, we teach a number of project-based molecular biology classes where students learn to manipulate DNA, RNA, and proteins. Again, learning relevant skills for for example, careers in biotechnology. We also have a strong emphasis on field-based classes, such as ornithology and field botany, where students get to go out into the environment and learn to identify species in the natural setting. And we also have a strong marine program. We teach classes with labs at the Cal Poly Pier or out in the environment, and so, and so, these are sort of examples of the way that we try to use this learn by doing philosophy to, to deliver a curriculum that really tries to give students as good of experience as possible. Um, one suggestion that I have for those of you that are undecided about where you're gonna go, what school you're gonna attend, one suggestion that I would have from the curriculum perspective is that you compare the classes that you're gonna be expected to take at the various institutions. I can tell you that at Cal Poly, when you look at those classes, you're gonna see that the vast majority of them are gonna have labs. And not that I would think of us as being, uh, not that this is all about a competition between us and the UCs, but I think if you look at quite a few of the UCs, the curriculum is gonna to tend to have fewer lab classes. So you can make your own decision, but that's a piece of information that you might find useful. So I'd encourage you to look at that. Um, so now I think I'm gonna hand it over to Dr. Lars Tomanek and, and to talk a little bit about research for undergraduates at Cal Poly. Uh, okay, I unmute myself and I hope you can hear me. Uh, 
again. Hello, I think as, uh, my name is Dr. Tomanek and I'm a professor here in the Biological Sciences Department. As Dr. Hillos just pointed out, our research pretty much starts in the courses you take, in the labs where you learn just the practical tools, pipetting, field observations, how to record, and also how to analyze data. And then this research experience continues when you work with an individual instructor, professor that you get to know in a lecture and you think, wow, this is really interesting. This is what I want to do. And you sign up for a research experience course. And that counts towards your degree. And we are dedicated to um, get you in the lab and to do science with you. And I can tell you from my own experience here in the background, I have the intertidal zone near Monterey. And I will show you another one here that I'm going to share with you in a second. Right on. Hopefully this works. Uh, see? Yes, I hope. Does it work, my colleagues? Do I get a nod? Yes, okay, thank you. Um, so this is uh, a foggy morning in uh, one of the intertidal zones nearby here. And you can see we are busy collecting mussels in this case. We're interested in how do these organisms cope with environmental stress? And what was exciting about this particular project is that it really couldn't have happened without the undergraduates. And actually they ran the show. And I show you this, this started out with some fancy equipment that our technicians in our uh, college constructed title simulators that are the envy of my colleagues all along the West Coast because they basically automate the tides and we can put animals in there and the students then basically run these experiments. And here are some examples on mussels in the intertidal zone. And here's the night crew. We did a five day um, experiment of looking at how do they respond to stress uh, at all levels of biological organization. And you can, you can see that some of them are already kind of half asleep after a few days being on the night crew. You can see a number of undergraduates and we took 15 undergraduates, which took 15 undergraduates um, and we had collaborators um, here, my colleague uh, from UC Davis and Tajam. So they really start to become part of the research community and they become part of our research effort. A lot of my colleagues in the department uh, do the same and they do it with all kinds of methods. Uh, we have students that come back after a few years uh, having been at Cal Poly and they are in these famous labs at UC Berkeley and Stanford with Nobel Prize winners. And uh, we listen to them, uh, how they tell us that apparently the department has done a really good job in preparing them for these careers in science. I personally have two students. Uh, one is now a doctor working at COVID uh, patients in Oregon. And the other one is actually leading some of the clinical trials that Gilead da does to test their antiviral medication that we are just hearing about in the news. So, um, and I know that all of my colleagues have the same experience. We, from the listening to our students after a few years, it sounds like they really get the experience of becoming researchers, getting into medical school and being successful in biotechnology in ecology and in other professions. So, um, and, and all of this is supported not only by uh, grants from the National Science Foundation, NIH, but also a very generous private donation by uh, Frost. And this Frost funding, as you probably heard, uh, allows our students in the summer to basically 150 students, I believe, in, in the college alone to do summer research and get supported. And uh, I think that really prepares them for a successful career. Thank you. All right. I will now get out of here and hand it over to, um, to Jack. Hi, um, my name is Jack Sumner. I'm a fourth year bio major um, that's concentrating in molecular and cellular bio here at Cal Poly. And I'm just going to talk briefly about my experiences with undergraduate research here and how it's not only transformed me into the scientist that I am today, but I really feel like it's impacted who I am as a person. Um, I started freshman year, like a lot of Cal Poly undergrads, and I joined Dr. Elena Keeling's lab and later also joined Dr. Jean Davidson's lab. And I've spent 
a lot of time thinking about how this little critter called a colonial ascidian can regenerate its whole body. And that's just a really awesome thing that as an undergrad, I get to sink my teeth into and really ask questions that would usually be reserved for graduate students and people at higher levels. Um, but because Cal Poly has this emphasis on undergraduate teaching and, and the faculty truly want to see their students thrive, that manifests itself on these one-on-one -on -one interactions that with faculty and with students that I don't think you get to see a lot of other places. Um, so kind of distilling it down, Cal Poly has given me the foundations of technical and theoretical skills to allow me to succeed um, as a scientist and as a researcher. And that's what that's what Cal Poly graduates are. They they can come out of this experience with the skills to identify a question that's never been answered before, design an experiment and find the answer. And I think that is truly impactful not only if you intend to become a researcher, but if you want to be a physician or anything, that skill set and that what undergraduate research here allows pushes you to that next level. Um, for me, that has manifested from the amazing mentorship I've received from the faculty and the, the Foundation for Skills into internships in biotechnology and in academia. And in this coming year, I'll be starting a PhD in molecular biology at Northwestern University. And I can say with certainty that those opportunities wouldn't have been there if it weren't for the opportunities that Cal Poly has provided me. Um, so that's all I have to say, but thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Gita Kuluru. I'm a professor in the biological sciences department, and I am coming to you from my lab so you can get a sense of what this research space looks like. And I'm also going to share some slides with you. Um, to talk a little bit about the kinds of research that students do. So I am a, a behavioral ecologist, so my lab studies the evolution of animal behavior, and we are currently working on tropical freshwater fish that are endemic to Cuba. And you can see in these videos um, some of the behaviors that these fish do. So this is a male courting a female, and then this next video you'll see a couple of males fighting with each other. So these are among the kinds of behaviors that our lab focuses on. And our lab is very much not just student centered, but in fact student driven and the research program involves undergraduate and graduate students at all stages. So our students help to design experiments to acquire the equipment that we need, of course, to collect data, whether those data are uh, watching animals behave and, and reporting that or analyzing images, analyzing videos collecting hormone samples. You see students in these images doing all of those things, uh, making 3D printed models to use as stimuli and tests. Those are all the kinds of things that our students work on. And then they're also very much involved in the data analysis phase of research, and then in disseminating our findings to the scientific community and to the world at large. And so students from um, our lab and others have uh, been co-authors on peer-reviewed publications, some of which you see here, and they've presented their findings to conferences from Cal Poly conferences to other national and international conferences as posters and as talks. And this behavioral research also extends to uh, classes, and so here you see some students doing hands-on activities and experiments as part of a behavioral ecology class, working on a variety of different kinds of animals. And this also extends to field work. So here are students working on the burrowing behavior of our local sand crabs. And you can see in this little video, a sand crab doing that burrowing. Probably many of you have seen that and uh, played with these crabs at the beach. So students do a lab on that, for instance, they look at their burrowing behavior and then uh, look to see if that's influenced by how many parasites they have. And for classes like this, students also present their work. So they really have an experience of every stage of the scientific process from designing and conducting experiments to working with the data and then writing up papers and presenting their work as uh, talks in the case of this class. 
to just to bring it back. It's of course all about our awesome students and I know you're all hearing that um, all day and it's because it's so important. Our students go on to do everything from going to medical school to nursing school to graduate school to working um, at jobs with Cal Fish and Wildlife or with uh, consulting firms, things like that. So they really are shaping the world in the future as a consequence of the biology degree that they received here at Cal Poly. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. And I'm gonna hand you off now to Stephanie. Hi everyone. Um, I'm a third year bio major and I also got involved in research really early on when I was a freshman. I started doing research actually with a different department. I started doing research with the psychology department. And so what was really cool is that I could find something that I was interested in and still get to do research in it, even though it wasn't my major and I could still get a really valuable experience from that and have it count towards my biology degree. And so that was a really, really great experience. And then once I was taking biology classes and I was doing um, some of the labs that I really enjoyed a lot of the classes that we take early on, they have a lot of really cool labs. I know one class I took, we were even able to like do a really big, large animal dissection. And so from doing those classes and already being involved in the labs by just being in the classes, I was able to figure out that I was even more interested in some biology topics. And so I could just talk to my professors and I was able to get involved in research in the biology department um, where I worked with Dr. Jean Davidson and really like undergrad research, like you can get involved when you're a freshman, it doesn't matter and you can just find something that you're interested in and research will really, I have met people um, that I think I'll know for the rest of my life from doing research. And so it's a really great experience to be able to have, um, it's great for, for what you're learning, but then also just by being in the lab and meeting people, um, you can really learn a lot. And Cal Poly does a really great job of making it super accessible because Every single professor loves to tell you what they're doing. So all you have to do is ask. And I'll hand it off now to uh, Dr. Blank, who's gonna tell us a little bit more about the biology major. Hi, uh, I'm Jason Blank. I've been at Cal Poly for about 11 years as a faculty member. I am an animal physiologist. And the last part, kind of saying my specialty, I do because biology is a, a really broad field. Um, there are certain kind of common concepts that, of course, all of us understand as biologists. Um, but then when you look at the actual hands-on skills that we have, somebody who goes out in the field and wrangles wild animals or goes out on boats and does marine sampling would have very different skills from somebody who does a lot of molecular biology in the lab or does animal physiology. Um, and I would say our department is, is really well balanced across biology. Um, you look at some other departments at other places and they're, they're very specialized. So I think that's good for students. A lot of students come in and they know they like life science and they're interested in biology, but it's as they go through their first year or two of classes that they really get excited about um, one particular type of biology or one particular level of biology. Um, so we do offer three different majors. Um, the biology major, biological sciences, the microbiology major, and the marine science major. Um, I'll let uh, Ken and Nikki talk about the micro and marine science majors. Um, within the biology major, there's a common set of courses that all bio majors take, um, the first couple of years in particular. And then students can either keep going with a really balanced um, curriculum across all areas of biology if they choose the general curriculum, or if they really get excited about one particular area, we do have three concentrations to choose from. Um, one is cell and molecular biology, one is anatomy and physiology, and one is ecology, evolution, and biodiversity conservation. So students who get really gung-ho about a particular area, they can look at one of those concentrations and it helps them to figure out what advanced courses and specialized lab or field experiences 
um, they want to develop and what skills they want to work on the rest of the way through. Um, and all of our class, not quite all of our classes, but a, a large majority of our classes have labs. And that doesn't just mean indoor labs, that also includes our field courses or classes that include a field lab where students are going outdoors and getting hands-on experience um, out in the field, um, including some great field trips in some of the, some of the classes. Um, so uh, a couple of things from the question and answer I can mention. Um, there was one about how many students graduate in four years, and we're up to about 60% uh, of our students graduating in four years. And if you think about the students who graduate in either four years or less, or four years in one quarter, it's about 75% of our students. Um, so if you've heard, you may have heard that that wasn't true in the past. Um, if you go back about 10 years, um, to the financial crisis in 2010. We did have a lot of students who took longer to graduate, but we've made some adjustments to the curriculum and we've also got the resources so that students can generally get into classes and not have to wait to take the classes they need. So I think most of the students who take longer, they perhaps changed majors or they've done study abroad or they've decided they just wanna not quite take as many classes each quarter um, because that allows them to focus more on each class. So, um, yeah, and some of our students are even graduating in less than four years nowadays. Um, one other one I, I can mention right now, um, uh, we had some questions about change of major, and I've actually been working with students uh, changing into the bio major this year, and we try to not raise any barriers. So if students get to Cal Poly, and then, you know, some of them, Seems like a lot of students take their first, take a botany class their first year and get super excited about plants and biology in general and come to talk to me about um, switching into bio. And they might lose a little bit of time because they're not taking the bio curriculum right from the start, but we try to make it possible for students to, to switch in um, relatively straightforwardly. Um, if they just take a few bio classes, decide, decide that they like them and do well in them. Um, and then one final question I'll tackle, uh, questions about med school and what majors work well for med school. Um, I would say the, the biology major or the microbiology major, either one of those is gonna make it pretty easy for students to take all of the prerequisites for medical school, as well as some of the other health profession schools. They can usually get all those, all those courses under their belt while they're um, at Cal Poly um, without it really slowing them down too much. Um, so I think I can pass, pass it off to, I think Ken is going to talk about our microbiology major next. Hi everybody. Uh, in addition to being the chair of the department, I'm a molecular biologist and a microbiologist. And so I'll just say a few words to introduce you to the microbiology degree. It's a, it's a relatively unique offering. There's not very many CSUs, for example, that offer a microbiology degree. It's a relatively small degree. There's only 20 or 30 students that, that are admitted into the program a year. And, and it includes some, some really interesting and exciting classes, particularly around uh, now, such as virology, uh, immunology. We offer a medical microbiology class, micro, microbial physiology. Um, the the students who graduate with a micro degree, um, they are frequently employed in biotech, they, or they go to med school, like Jason said, or work as public health microbiologists. We also offer a class in food microbiology. And so we also have students that, that explore that as an option. Um, again, we, we really have an emphasis on providing students with good experiences in both the research and the teaching labs. And with the micro degree, we've started a class called Micro 100, which is actually an intro to microbiology research specifically for first year students. And so we're really excited about this as a possibility. So uh, if you have further questions about microbiology, you can get in touch with me. My email address can be found on the website. And now I'll hand it over to Dr. Nikki Adams for Marine Sciences. Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Nikki Adams. And in addition to being a faculty member in the Department of Biological Sciences, I am also the advisor for the Marine Sciences bachelor's degree. So I want to tell you a little bit about that degree. So 
I'm going to show you a few slides. And the first thing I want to emphasize is that Cal Poly is situated in an ideal location for studying marine sciences. So we have wonderful geography. And in fact, when I was an undergraduate at a different institution, I came up here for my field trips. And so that really attracted me to Cal Poly as a potential faculty member. So some of the environments we have, uh, like you see behind me, are these amazing intertidal zones. This one in particular is near Cayucas, and this is Estero Bay. And so uh, as a student with us, you will explore a lot of these intertidal zones. And clearly we have a lot of wonderful beaches around here as well. And this is some students in my invertebrate zoology class, both at the beach and the intertidal zone right next to them. In addition, we have one of the most famous California estuaries. If you recall the gem of Morro Bay, uh, a fictitious aquarium in Morro Bay, but we may soon have a new one. This is, so this is Morro Bay, California, right here, right in our backyard. And I wanna emphasize that most of these locations are about 15 to 20 minutes away from the campus. So we have easy access to these environments and also charismatic organisms like our sea otters and sea hares in Morro Bay. In addition to those areas, we also have a wonderful pier marine lab in Avila Beach. And so this shows you a view from the hills. And so you can see that this is a kilometer long pier. And if we go out to the end of the pier, this is where we have our research labs. So we have a teaching facility and a research lab, and I'll give you a closer look. And so this is the main marine lab where we offer courses and, or we at least do our field trips for our courses and we do our research. So we can deploy instruments off this platform. We can work in the laboratory and do the experiments and analyze our samples. We can look at organisms. And uh, this is a wonderful platform where you can perform marine science without getting seasick. But we also do launch boats. And so here's one of our marine vessels where we can do research and our classes. I want to emphasize a few aspects of how we involve students. Clearly, you've heard about a lot of research projects. I want to mention a few that you haven't heard about. Uh, I study effects of the environment on marine organisms. Uh, Heather Lewanig, who is uh, here answering some of your questions, also does work in Antarctica. And so we do try to involve our students in broader projects that get them elsewhere. Uh, but I'm going to focus more on the coursework. So we also do have a marine science and fisheries club that you can get involved in and meet other people and uh, learn more about all kinds of opportunities. But we have a variety of marine focused courses. So I want to emphasize that our degree is intended to be interdisciplinary. You'll first get a foundation in anything from the biological sciences to chemistry and physics and geology. And, and of course your GEs as well. We want you to be round, well-rounded people. But our main courses then focus on a variety of aspects that we, that we have at, as uh, research programs also at the university. So we have anything from oceanography, uh, communicating ocean sciences to fishery science and uh, marine chemistry, conservation, and uh, other kinds of oceanography. So we have physical and biological and chemical oceanography as emphases. But we also focus on the organism. So you can learn more about fishes if you're interested in them, the marine invertebrates like the sea stars and crabs and sea urchins. Um, and you can also learn about marine mammals. So we have a lot of those kind of classes. We also have classes that are specifically designed to get you out in the environment, like ocean sampling. And we have an introductory class that uh, teaches you all about the program. We also have, a, so here's some views of some of our students out in the environment involved in some of these courses. We also have a robust uh, marine and scientific boating and diving program. 
so we can give our students experience in learning how to handle the boats and in getting a lot of sea time to go on to do some other endeavors. And we also train scientific divers. And so what that means is these students get the skills, they get extra diving training that you know, gives them the skills to learn how to collect organisms and perform research underwater. And in both of these programs, these students take away skills that they can use in their future careers. They're very marketable skills and our uh, future employers tell us that they love to have our students uh, coming to them because they're so well prepared by having experience out in the environment and in these programs. So that's just a little, a few of the highlights of the program. I can share some links with you on the Q&A. We have, you can learn more about our program or our degree program at the Biological Sciences website. There's also a great informational video uh, on YouTube or that is also, there's a link to that from our marine.calpoly.edu website. And then certainly if you have any other questions, you're always welcome to contact me directly. I'm nadams at calpoly.edu. Right, so I wanna thank you. If you feel like this is the right fit for you, we look forward to seeing you in the fall. And now I'd like to send or pass this off to Mallory, who is one of our undergraduates in the Marine Sciences program. Hi everybody, my name is Mallory. I am a fourth year marine science major. Um, I personally have really enjoyed my uh, courses that I've taken in this major. We do a lot of, like everybody has said, we do a lot of outside laboratory work. Um, we go to the intertidal zone multiple times, at least I have, and I've uh, really been uh, lucky to be able to learn from a lot of our professors that I've taken courses with. Uh, but Cal Poly has also provided me with a lot of outside opportunities that aren't just coursework. Uh, currently, I'm involved in a few things. I am involved in a settlement project where we count and um, identify certain juvenile organisms that have settled on some brushes that we have out at our Cal Poly Pier. I am also involved in some research with Dr. Nikki Adams. Uh, we do research with uh, urchins and their de developmental uh, effects um, that are caused by sunscreens and things like that. And I am also working at the Cal Poly Pier as their student assistant. I do a lot of uh, cleaning of the tanks and feeding of the animals. I also do pretty much anything that they need me to do to keep everything running and keep the water pumping and keep all of those animals out there alive for all the researchers that uh, do their research and um, the classes that go out there to learn. And so I do a lot of that stuff. So if you guys have any questions about any of those things, um, you can ask your questions in the Q&A, um, but I will, direct it to uh, Mary, Mary Steele, another student. Hi, um, yeah, I'm Mary. I'm a third year biology major. And uh, I just wanted to address, I saw a couple of questions about studying abroad with biology and other majors related to that. Um, so although it is generally more difficult to find um, focus programs like directed towards science um, degrees abroad, um, it's definitely possible for me. What I did is since Cal Poly is partnered with various um, study abroad programs like CEA and um, USAC, I studied abroad and was able to fulfill a lot of my other degree requirements like general education classes. So it definitely doesn't set you back at all. It might be a little bit more difficult to find programs directly related to biology, but um, that's also possible as well. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, we're just about done with our, our formal presentation now. So we're trying to catch up with the questions in the Q&A section. And there are a few of them that we're going to try to answer live. And I'm trying to remember which one that I was supposed to answer. Um, I've got you, Ken. What percentage of biology students continue their education beyond a bachelor's degree? Ah, OK. And that's a little bit, and that's kind of related to that. that 
that's kind of related to the question of, of what proportion of bio students would go on to medical school, for example. And unfortunately, we don't have good numbers. We don't have a good answer to that question. Um, and the reason for that is because students often begin their post graduate programs, either medical school or a PhD program or some other professional training um, after some gap, some period of time after they've graduated from Cal Poly. Um, and we lose touch with many of our students at that point. So we've done some polling, some queries, some surveys to try to find out what students are doing. But, but then you have the problem of only getting responses from a subset of the students, the ones that want to tell you what they're doing. And so, so we can't say this is the percentage of Cal Poly students that go on to get a PhD, or this is the percentage of Cal Poly students that are accepted to medical school. We have lots of anecdotal evidence. We all know students that are going to PhD programs um, or are, are, are going into medical school, but, but I don't have a good answer for the, for the specific percentages. Um, Jack, maybe you, there was a question about senior project. Maybe you could speak about what the senior project is right now. Absolutely. Um, the senior project is kind of like a thesis. Um, so if you choose to do research at Cal Poly, you can take what you've discovered or what you've been researching for X amount of time and compile it into this uh, document. Um, that can look like a paper. So I'm writing my senior project right now um, where I and a group of other undergrad researchers sequenced the genome of this species that has never had its genome sequenced before. And we're writing that up, or I'm writing that up right now to try and formally express what that research is. What did I do? Who cares about it? Why is it important? And so people take whatever research they're doing and then apply it to um, their senior projects. Uh, for me, we're trying to get this published. And I think a lot of other students also publish their senior project work. Um, so when that does happen, you know, it, it's this really great opportunity to engage in discourse with uh, the scientific community. So it's a thesis. That's what your senior project is. Uh, I was um, I was asked to address the question of of having to do with graduation rates and and what happens with students. Why is it that, for example, all students don't graduate in four years? And we talked about that a little bit. Jason talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, we know that students, many I shouldn't say many, fifteen to twenty percent of our students are not continuously enrolled during their time at Cal Poly. That could be because they take a quarter off to do an internship or to study abroad or for personal or financial reasons. But, but having students, have, if all students are not continuously enrolled, then that's part of the explanation for why students would take more than four years to graduate. We have worked hard to try to identify any um, structural problems with the curriculum, you know, over the last 10 or 15 years, we've really focused on trying to remove barriers to graduation. And so we're pretty confident that at this point, um, the, the, we are not much of the problem anyways with students graduating in four years. Uh, we could probably ask the students if they have anything on the panel, if they have anything they want to say, they may, hopefully they won't surprise me. Um, Within five years of enrollment, the, the graduation rate's about 80%. And so, and so we're, we're doing pretty good with that, I think. Oh, uh, let's see, I think I'm here to talk about cadavers, right? I was answering one of the question and answer questions. So we do have um, three human cadavers right now. We use those in some of our upper level anatomy and physiology classes. And I think one of the questions was asking just about how many students got the opportunity to work with those. Um, that's actually what I just typed an answer to. 
but basically any, any biology major can sign up for those classes. And occasionally we get students from other majors such as biomedical engineering or kinesiology who take one of those. Um, so there's no limit in terms of just getting a chance to spend some time studying the anatomy with an actual human cadaver. We've also recently started offering a summer course in which uh, teams of students actually do the dissection on the cadavers. When we first get them, they're intact, completely um, undissected. And so the students basically, we take that summer class, they do the dissection start to finish, and they prepare the cadaver in a way that it will then be useful for students in other classes to be able to go in and look at the detailed anatomy. Um, so that's really given more students an opportunity to get that hands-on experience. Um, and as part of that summer class, we're also acquiring new cadavers on a more frequent basis. So um, hopefully that'll mean that any student who wants that opportunity will, will be able to get it. Thanks, Jason. So I'm going to answer one of the really common questions that we get, which is, what is the difference between the undergraduate experience at Cal Poly compared to a UC school? And as a product of the UC system myself, I can say a couple things about that, one of which is definitely class size at the UC system. Even my upper division courses in biology were huge, over 100 students, and ours are a lot smaller at the upper division level, which means you get the opportunity to get to know your professors on a personal level. And on that note, it is much more accessible for undergraduates to get into research with professors here at Cal Poly. It was very, very difficult as a UC student for me to do that as an undergraduate because they have PhD students and postdocs and all sorts of folks working in their labs and they don't always have opportunities available for undergraduates. But here that is our focus at Cal Poly and so your ability to do research and even in different labs if you want is really just right there for you at Cal Poly. So I would say those are the two biggest differences, but if anyone wants to chime in with something else that I've forgotten, feel free. Yeah, I'll jump in for a second and, and follow up with the, with the statement about, about CSU versus UC. Um, it's uh, particularly at Cal Poly, we are, we are directly focused on providing undergraduates with research experiences, and we encourage faculty to design their research projects with undergraduates in mind. Um, UCs, the research projects are designed with the, with the accomplishment of the research in mind, and, and they're gonna tend to use PhD candidates or postdocs. Um, another way that we're different is that, is that we have extensive resources and support available for students engaged in research. Cal Poly was recently the recipient of a $110 million donation to the College of Science and Math. You may have heard about that. It established the Frost Fund for Undergraduate Research. And that's an amazingly generous donation that's gonna support undergraduate research in our department and across the College of Science and Math for the next, um, uh, for, for the foreseeable future. And it allows us to purchase equipment and and provide students access to opportunities that they would not have at other institutions. And so that's something I really wanted to highlight there. Looks like I'm muted by the, oh, there, thank you. Um, I just wanted to add a little bit to what Jack said about the senior project requirement. So it's a requirement of all students at Cal Poly. And uh, as Jack said, a lot of our students elect to and have the opportunity to conduct research and that research may even be publishable. So their senior project scientific style paper that they write um, can oftentimes be published, which is a great opportunity for students. There's no requirement that students need to produce something that's publishable per se. It could be something that furthers their education and, and acts as a capstone experience for their um, classes and research that they've done at Cal Poly in other ways other than, than being publishable. Um, and there are some alternative forms that the senior project could take other than a scientific paper, although that's typically the form that it does take. And then there's also a completely different route that students can pursue to meet that senior project requirement. They can take a class that's a proposal writing class, and that's a 
uh, typically 10 week class. And if they um, do well past that class and produce a scientific proposal as a consequence of that, then that also meets the requirement for the senior project. And it's another great learning opportunity for students because they get to learn how to write a style of scientific writing that not all students um, have experience with, and that is writing a large scale research proposal. So these are both avenues to fulfill that requirement. Uh, another question that we've been getting has been about transferring. So either between majors in the same department or in the biology department, or um, coming from a different college, transferring is definitely possible at Cal Poly, even though you um, have to declare your major. And it's really not um, very difficult. You just need to make, like have the required classes. So if you're looking to transfer into a certain major, um, whether or not you're coming from out of the department or not, all you need to do is um, like, look at the requirements that that major has for transferring in and that that's going to look like a certain GPA or certain classes that you need to take. Um, and then once you've done that, the transferring process is really pretty smooth. Um, and it's definitely possible. I transferred from the College of Ag into the biology um, major my first year at Cal Poly. So it's definitely possible and it's not too difficult. Hi, there was a question on how heavy is the coursework when you are doing your classes as well as classes for your concentration? Will there be time to have a balanced academic and social life? And absolutely, yes. Um, I think Cal Poly, you know, the quarter system is different coming from semester systems and growing up with that. And that is definitely an adjustment. Um, not gonna sugarcoat that, but it is something that you do learn how to balance um, after time and with persistence. So once you get the hang of things, it just keeps getting easier and easier. Um, but you have to figure out a system that works for you and how to find your own balance. But there is absolutely, uh, you know, there can be that great social life too. Hi. Um, yeah, there was a question also about um, preparing before WOW Week, um, if you plan on coming to Cal Poly. And um, WOW Week is very much just an orientation to get you familiar with the campus and um, everything it has to offer and everything. Um, so my, in my experience, um, other than going to uh, slow days, which as you know, is like sort of pre preparation before WOW Week, um, there's not a whole lot. Um, I didn't feel very, very much stressed to get a lot done before WOW Week because um, it's really just our opportunity to get acquainted with the campus. But I had a great experience during WOW Week and um, I'm sure every other student can attest to that as well. Let's see, I'm muted. Okay, I think maybe you can hear me now. Um, there was a question about block scheduling, and that's something the university started doing a couple of years ago to try to make it um, easier for first year students to get all the classes they need at the right times. And so basically, um, for the first fall quarter at Cal Poly, the university will look at students' majors and what they have in terms of any AP credit and they will go ahead and enroll them into all the classes they need for their major, um, particularly for that first quarter. And then they actually keep doing that for major required classes for the whole first year. Um, so uh, students start registering themselves for any additional electives they, they want to take um, it, for winter quarter or spring quarter of their first year. And then after the first year, it's their responsibility to make sure they sign up for the classes they want in a particular quarter. Um, but that's really helped our, our first year students not to go last in line in terms of registering for, for classes so that they can make progress through the intro bio series and the introductory chemistry classes and math classes they need. Um, and then let's see, who's next? Hi, again. Um, so there was a question about Greek life um, while being a bio major. 
I'm not in normal Greek life. I'm in the chemistry fraternity, um, professional co-ed frat. So it just shows my personality, but that is still a time commitment and it's definitely able to be balanced. Um, so you can do professional fraternities and it's still have that social aspect. Now I haven't directly been in um, like normal Greek life, but I can say I have a lot of friends in bio that have also, that are very successful bio majors and are also um, in Greek life as well. And so they can do it. Let's see. Hi everyone, there was, a, there was a question that we haven't addressed, a very timely and topical question that we haven't addressed, which is, which is or, or several questions about the effects of COVID-19 on, on what's happening at Cal Poly. Um, one of the questions had to do with what's happening with labs now that we're doing virtual education. And, and obviously the, the pictures that everybody's shown of students doing lab work and taking classes in labs and all, all puddled together as they manipulate some piece of equipment, those sorts of things are clearly not happening now, much to our regret. So, so labs are being offered virtually and the faculty are working hard to give students the best experience that they can with the limitations of, of social distancing and not having access to campus. We, we will continue for as long as, for as long as campus is close to students, we will continue to try to do the best job that we can with the experiences that students are getting. And, and although we can't train students how to pet remotely, we certainly can give students experience with, with data analysis, with experimental design, with with presentation of results and so and so it's not the same as it would as it was before covid but it's not um but i think it's not but we're still but i guess all i'll say is we're doing the best job that we can um if any of the students want to jump in after a minute you can speak to this as well um, but another one of the questions about COVID had to do with whether slow days or, or any of the normal summer activities will be held. And we don't know the answer to that yet. Um, and so if you want to know about, about other Cal Poly related activities and whether or not they're going to be held, go to, um, just go to the Cal Poly website for the most up-to-date information. But I would imagine that decisions about summer events are going to be made um you know maybe just a month before the event we haven't we don't know what's happening at this point any of you students want to speak to virtual labs yeah i can speak uh to virtual labs i'm in two labs this quarter so i have um biochemistry and developmental bio and each professor is doing the labs a little bit differently but they both still we meet on zoom and you meet with a group you have like a collaborative environment and what we've been doing is we've been talking about the experiments and like what different types of things we can do um we've been looking at case studies and um, doing analysis based off of case studies and pre-written data um, a lot of the labs and like even even doing research separately, not related to a class. Um, we've still been able to like keep working, even if we can't be in the lab, like pipetting and doing different stuff. There's like, like Dr. Hiller said, there's still um, data analysis that we can do, which is really important to learn. Um, so yeah, the labs are definitely still going definitely different. Um, but still, still a great experience. And just because I've seen a few questions about internships as well, um, it's really um, about like getting internships is really about like you going out and looking for them. And there's a lot of resources on campus that will help you find them. There's a career center, there's a um, pre-health advising center and all of these places are great places. They're all really happy to help students find internships because that's a really popular route to go and you definitely don't have to go that way but um there's a lot of different ones 
there are internships covering almost anything you can think of. Some of them can be on campus. Um, and also a lot of students look for them for over the summer from outside companies. And these are still accepting um, applications as of now. So um, that's kind of gonna depend on the internship um, that you wanna look at. Um, but a lot of them, whether or not they're on campus or in slow or from your home, like you can definitely um, access them and they're all gonna be great experiences. And you can do an internship on anything and I guarantee that it will help you in your academic pursuits. I just wanted to jump in, um, first introduce myself I'm Dr. Jean Davidson. I'm a faculty member. I do research in genetics, genomics, bioinformatics. Um, so I wanted to touch base again about the um, research opportunities and the hands-on experience. I think Cal Poly really excels in providing hands-on experience for students really early and really often. Um, students when they are able to be in the lab in these intro series classes are right out the gate doing hands-on pipetting, hands-on sequencing, hands-on molecular biology techniques that often at other UCs you don't get up until you know higher uh, level classes I didn't even do until grad school. Um, so I want to say that there is a lot of hands-on experience especially in the molecular biology that I'm really impressed with. And when I think about internship opportunities, um, it really falls into two categories, um, on campus and external. I've had a lot of success with students um, getting external internships with both companies, other academic research groups. Um, I myself maintain just a big uh, spreadsheet that has a lot of summer research undergrad experiences that are all over the country um, that are really often looking for students from kind of primary research, uh, primary undergrad institutions to have that experience of being at an R1 for a summer and really churning out high level research. And then they, there is also these wonderful opportunities to do research with a faculty member at Cal Poly. Um, these are people out going in the field doing all this wonderful marine and ornithology came up in the chat, all this wonderful research or being at the bench doing molecular biology, intersecting with public health, with food science, food safety, biomedical engineering, a lot of the internships and a lot of the research is cross-disciplinary. Um, so students get some really wonderful research experiences, which is highlighted. Uh, the College of Sciences and Math does a lovely research symposium every year too. Students are encouraged to make posters and give talks and share, and you get to hear about all the interdisciplinary research that's going on. So I think one of the really, you've heard it a thousand times, and I'll just highlight it one time, what is a really a great uh, feature of Cal Poly of the bio department is you were trained to become a scientist, you get that hands-on experience, managing the experiments, managing the writing, managing how to collaborate and work well with people. And I think that's a really unique characteristic of our department. So I'm gonna pass it over to Ken to wrap up. Um, and if there's any more questions, we I think have addressed everything in the Q&A, but please go ahead and type in any more questions if they come up. All right, well, thanks everybody. Um, it's been a pleasure having you. Uh, I hopefully we have we have expressed. Am I showing the presenter view again? You're fine. You're good. Hopefully we have expressed the strengths of, of the biological science department and convinced you that uh, that that we're doing a good job. And and if you didn't get your questions answered you could send me an email and we can follow up my email address is k hillers k-h-i-l-l-e-r-s at calpoly.edu um, i do see one open question how many people are actually admitted as bio majors we would admit we accept somewhere around 200 we enroll about 200 new students each year between the three degrees so Anyways, thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good day and good luck with the decision-making process and hopefully we'll see you in the fall.